This week in lab, we'll be talking about the accuracy of glassware. The purpose of this lab is to determine the most accurate measuring device and practice using different pieces of glassware. The first one on the left here is a beaker. The second will be a graduated cylinder. The third is a burette. And the fourth is a volumetric pipette. So remember that when we're reading liquid levels in glassware, we want to avoid parallax, which means reading the wrong volume because our line of sight was not directly in line with the bottom of the meniscus, which remember that is that U shape that forms when water sticks to the sides of the glass. It forms that and we always want to read at the bottom of that well. So you want your eye to be in line, as you can see in the middle, right with the bottom of the meniscus in order to read the most accurate volume. Also a little note, a uh, burette is read um, the opposite of what you would think. So we're filling it up from the bottom, but the volumes are read from top to bottom instead of bottom to top like normal pieces of glassware. So in this example, we're reading this volume as 6.63 milliliters because the six is at the top and we're going reading down towards the seven. Also remember that you interpolate to the one decimal place further than the smallest marking. So all of our measurements should have two decimal places for the volume. So the procedure that we'll be following for this lab, first we'll measure the prescribed volume of water in a 50 milliliter beaker from a different piece of glassware. So whatever the lab section says we will use. And then we will record the temperature and mass of the volume of water that we measured out. And we'll do this a total of three times to get the, most, the best data. And it's important to record the temperature of the water because there's a table in your manual that gives you densities of water at certain temperatures. So using that table, you can find the expected density of the water and you can use that density and the mass to calculate the actual volume that was dispensed. And then using the actual volume, you can determine how accurate each piece of glassware was by calculating the percent error. And um, we can also determine the precision of our measurements by average deviation. Uh, just a reminder or lesson about accuracy and precision. So accuracy is how close the value is to the true accepted value. So we measure accuracy by reporting error and percent error. So error by itself is the measured value minus the accepted value. And percent error is error divided by the accepted value. So you're taking that error, dividing by the value that is accepted and multiplying times 100 to get a percent. Precision tells how close values in a given collection are to one another. And the way that we find how precise our data is, is by using average deviation, which is this formula at the bottom, the sum of each individual value minus the average divided by the total number of values. And remember, those are absolute value bars, so that subtraction problem should always end in a positive number because you're taking the absolute value of the answer. So with these targets that we have here on the right side, the first one, the top left, all of those darts are accurate and precise. They are all accurate because they're all in the middle in the target that you want to be at. 
and they are precise because they're all close to each other. Now the one to the right of that, they're not very accurate. They're not in the center. They're very much on the outside. However, they're very precise because they're all very close to each other. Now when we go to the bottom left target, they're decently accurate. They're all within, you know, the third ring out of the target, out of the middle. So we can say they're decently accurate. However, they're really not precise. They're not close to each other. Every throw ended in a different, very different place. So we can say they're accurate, but not precise. And finally, the target on the bottom right, these are not accurate. They're not in the middle. And they're really not that precise because they're very far away from each other relative to the other targets. So this is an example of a calculation that you'll be doing to find the um, percent error of your measurements. So if we measured out 50 milliliters of water in a beaker and we weighed that mass and it turns out that the mass of that water was 48.45 grams, we want to find the percent error of that measurement. So remember that error is the measured value minus accepted value and the percent error is that error divided by the accepted value times 100. So our measured volume was 50 milliliters and to find the accepted volume we go to that table in the lab manual and find the density that corresponds with water at 23 degrees Celsius and then we can divide that dense divide the mass by the density and the, then we get our accepted value as 48.57 milliliters now we can find percent error by subtracting measured minus accepted value, dividing by the accepted value, and multiplying all of that times 100. So here our percent error was 2.944%. So that's what you'll be doing for each of the measurements for each piece of glassware. And the end goal, which piece of glassware is the most accurate? And basically percent error is the way that we can figure that out. So the glassware that has the lowest percentage of error is the most accurate. So by the end of this lab, by the end of all the calculations, you should be able to figure out which piece of glassware is the best to use when you want to be super accurate in an experiment.